hello everyone in this video we will see how to calculate or how to find out safe sequence the safe sequence actually used to check whether a system is in deadlock state or not if a system current allocation will result in a safe sequence then there won't be any chance of deadlock but if uh, there is no safe sequence uh, that will be called as unsafe state and uh, in unsafe state there are chances of deadlock so here we will see how to find this safe sequence so we are having three process p1 p2 p3 these are specifying their maximum need so we can say process p1 going to need 10 resources during its execution p2 need 4 and p3 need 9 and this is the current allocation so p1 is having 5 p2 is having 2 and p3 is having 2 and the total number of resources we are having 12 so if we will see the pictorial representation of this scenario these are the resources and the type of resources here we are actually considering single type of resources so if we consider process p1 this process need total 10 resources but currently this process is having 5 so out of 5 uh, out of 12 5 is currently allocated to process p1 for pro so after allocating these 5 remaining resources are 7 so for process p2 p2 totally need 4 but currently it is having 2 so out of 7 2 will be allocated to p2 and similar for p3 p3 total need 9 but currently it is having 2 so out of 12 resources finally we are having 3 resources which are free and this is the current allocation so if you can see uh, this process p1 actually need total 10 resources but currently it is having 5 so it needs 5 more same process p2 need 2 more and process p3 need 7 more resources so these resources actually required to complete their execution if these resources won't be allocated to them then they will be waiting forever so here we can see we are having only three resources and the requirement of process p1 is 5 process p2 2 process p3 7 so we can see uh, these available resources can satisfy only process p2 requirement so out of these three two will be alloc allotted to process p2 so now process p2 will be having all of its resources total it needs four and allocated to this process p2 four so this process is having all its required resources it will complete an execution and once this execution is done it will release all the resources so currently uh, before the completion of process p2 we are having only one resource available so when this p2 will complete all of its resource will be released so we can say now what we are having we are having total five resources available now process p2 is completed so when we will write our safe sequence we will write the process number which is allocated resource first so we have written this one process p2 actually allocated all the resources first now process p1 need five more resources and process p3 need seven and currently we are having only five so these available resources can satisfy requirement of process p1 so these resources will be allotted to process p1 so while now process p1 also having all of its resources p1 will complete its execution and once the execution is over all the allotted resources will be released so all these after execution all these resources will be available and if we count them these are total 10 resources so now we are having 10 resources in our hand so after p2 we actually allotted resources to p1 so next process will be p1 so now we are having only one process left and this process need 7 resources and we are having total 10 so we can so this requirement can be satisfied so out of 10 7 will be allotted allotted to process p3 
process pre 3 will complete its execution and it will release all of its nine resources so sequence will be p2 we actually set a high requirement for p2 then p1 then p3 so this sequence is actually known as safe sequence so this sequence is actually used to find out whether the system is in deadlock state or not so this is the way to find out safe sequence in case if we are having a single type of resources in case uh, if we want to find out uh, uh, safe sequence when we are having multiple types of resources we can use uh, the same algorithm but with different different resource type which we will see in next video thank you very much for watching